Hi folks, welcome back to the 440 Automation Project. So that is way too fast, but we're getting there. So we just finished a training class. I got this project back out, super excited to get it working. Put the table, uh, clamp the plate to the 440 table. And then we had some problems with the flatness of the of the platen itself. So sitting here trying to bend it down, just kind of tweaking it in. Now we need to do is do some thinking on how to take our next step. On my list here, okay, computer and Arduino, testing the control of the RPM, that's pretty easy in the code. And then I need to test my feed stack here. We'll put it, we'll put it back on and see, does it pick one up? So I guess that's what I'll do now. Slow the RPMs down, let's see, will it pick one up? The next thing I'm already thinking about is some proximity switch to detect position because I don't think, we'll see if I can trust the motor, um, the motor just, in the code alone without having some locator, like home switch, if you will. Couple problems. I know that my coupler here stinks, but I don't actually think that's the problem. Um, I'll show you real quick. The problem is this transfer between the storage uh, rack vertical and dropping into this slot. So if I hit forward A, it skips over it if I'm too fast, slow it down, I start to lose motor power. So actually skipped over there. I think I probably lost tram. Uh, let's, uh, let's play with that. So this is what's so critical. So yeah, I bumped out of the way probably when I jerked it. So here's the analysis. Put a piece in, move it quickly, skips over it. Move it slowly. And if I jerk, just rock it a little, that one's still not going in. I got to adjust it a little more here. So slowly, let's see what happens. Ooh, that worked. Slowly, drops in, and if I shuffle it around here, underneath, it'll fall out as well. But if we speed up a little, it skips over it, or see it right there, it just jerked it. Now I can lock this thing down better than having a little clamp on it, but um, I think I'm fighting the wrong battle here. I've got a, the reason I wanted this to be a tight fit is that helps hold it in place when it locks down. And I've got an idea of mounting something on the spindle nose that'll also help hold it. But nevertheless, the less slop here, the better. But if you look, we analyze the, what happens when it usually falls down, usually tips left. See that it tipped backward. Well, it's not really a huge deal because I can have it slow down just when I'm picking up the piece and then speed back up. That's actually a win. Um, that would mean I really want some sort of positional awareness of where the motor is so I can slow down only in that zone. The other thing which ties right back into that is low RPM power. Problem I'm having right now, and it's not the driver's fault, it's just that when I go this slow, I'm trying to move it at like five out of 127, so that's literally three or 4% of the motor's RPM, I'm giving it almost no power, no torque. Uh, and it just doesn't have the torque. It can't go that slowly. Pulse, I guess it's pulse width management or modulation. Good, dear God, sorry. I said that incorrectly last time and the internet jumped all over me. Um, so I have an interesting solution, ClearPath. So I started this project before we met the folks at ClearPath. We've now been working on them on a few things, but I had no intention of using them on this. I like the fact that it was kind of leftover scrappy parts. I, these are $250, so it's like a little bit more than I was hoping to prove um, out with this project, but that's still totally okay. And first of all, they work great with Arduino. The other thing is I could also keep this motor, but I would need to do a gear down reduction. And that would mean changing a lot more of the design, I think, that I want to change to get the uh, reduction in RPMs. But again, I want to say, I think that would work and then I could still drive it at different speeds, but the clear path is going to be such an elegant solution. So let's modify our plate here to take this three eighth inch shaft and let's get her working. Houston, we have clear path. So I realized it's going to take me a bit of time to modify this base plate and there's no reason to do it if the clear path isn't going to work. So I got to be safe here, but I mounted it in a vise 
I'm gonna turn that aluminum bushing just to make it fit the shank for now. Should be plenty good. So let's load up the Arduino code. This is actually kind of the same code that we used if you saw our video when we did uh, the first video on Clearback. Let's see if we can rotate it at a slow speed and if we've got decent torque. Folks, it's working. So what did we do? How did we get it working? I really did want to use the gear motor and the dimension engineering Arduino DC motor driver. And we've got more projects coming because they're awesome to work with and dimension engineering, big shout out. I love their drivers, but ClearPath ended up being the answer here. The regular ClearPath didn't work. Here's why. When you're out, this is a 22 inch circle. You're just, you've got way too much torque requirements all the way out of that outer limits. And one of the things my goals for 2017 is instead of using words like torque limits at the outer radius, is actually get a little bit more scientific and learn about this stuff. But you need some, you need some mechanical advantage. So a gearbox is the answer. There's the, uh, there's the gearbox mounting right to the ClearPath motor. ClearPath is amazing as a company for one reason, you can talk to a real person when you call them. It's amazing. They helped us get that gearbox and it's 100 to 1 gear ratio. We are rocking and rolling. Here's what I love about this. The Arduino code is so simple. How does this work? When you turn the machine on, you rotate it by, by hand to the spot where a clamp drops in. I'm just doing this by hand. Then when you plug the Arduino in, it knows you're at home position. Home position is zero. It's 8,000 revolutions of the ClearPath motor to, or 8,000 steps, I should say, to make one revolution. And it's a servo, so we have accurate control. So what we do, we go to 4,000 at full speed, we come back, we slow down, I think, yeah, near the drop area, then we come to slightly before what would be 8,000, and we go to slower feed rate. Why? Because that's what helps us pick up the station correctly. Then we get back to a little clearance area, and then we whip it back around. Just to prove it to you that that's what works, I'll do it right now, again. So we'll get it to where it drops in. Okay, I'll add a couple more clamps. Plug it in. Slows down. Picks up a clamp. Goes around. So I forgot, I do, like I said, I need to add a braking area because sometimes it's throwing them out of the drop shoot, feed shoot too quickly, which is amazing. Like what a great problem to have. So what's next? Now we need to finish the project, but we got it working. This was the hurdle. Um, there are some elegant things I need to do. I need to mount this to it. I've got a creative idea for um, how we're gonna have it secure the clamp when it's engraving it. Uh, I've got to interface it with the Tormach USB IO board, and I've got to add the slowdown area here and I think this was the most comments I've ever gotten on a single YouTube video on our YouTube career, which is why didn't we add 20 or 12 or whatever, 50 stations around the wheel? Folks, baby steps. Get it working with one. Once we get it working with one, we can add more. 
But I'll tell you, that's not even the goal here. It's, uh, the goal is reliability, not complexity. And one of the problems of this design is that, that having multiple stations around it increases the concentricity and tolerances of the keyway and the gearbox and the mounting this plate on here and the feed station, the hopper chute. And if it stops working or it works intermittently, that's a waste. I would much rather have it work a little more slowly, but reliably, we've got to build the feed stack up here and then we're good. Look, I am not the world's automation expert. I'm a guy, DIY guy trying to put this together as quickly and scrappy as I can, and it works, which is one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. So, folks, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the last video where we'll have this fully assembled, put together, and really making our clamp handles. If you want to buy a clamp, too, by the way, to support our channel, card here and link in the video description. We actually improved them a lot lately. We've been using stainless, uh, thicker hex bar, brass ends to them. They're really nice. Take care, folks. See you soon.